the peace plan, uh, the Stewart plan, as I call it, the Me Too plan. Uh, and Murtaza, we'll start with you. Uh, how unrealistic is that? It's similar to a 2002 Arab League resolution. Uh, why? Why can't this happen? Well, I'll tell you why it's not going to happen, and they know why it's not going to happen. I don't know why they're not saying why it's not going to happen. The West Bank is around 13 to 14 miles from Tel Aviv, which means that if the Palestinians had a second state which is hostile to Israel, how can it not be hostile at this rate, or any Arab nation had it, they could hit Tel Aviv with 155 millimeter artillery shells, which are all over the world. As you know, in Ukraine, millions a year go there. I mean, it wouldn't take much, really, to just basically destroy Tel Aviv from the West Bank. So that's why the, the Me Too plan will never, ever, ever fly. And to propose it is, well, it's actually a little funny. <laughs> I think the problem is, I write about U.S. foreign policy, especially in the Middle East, and I feel that the consistent theme here is that when we give blank checks to countries which are clients or partners, we enable their worst tendencies or their worst behaviors. And this Blank checks is what you call it? Blank checks? So blank checks are being dropped on women and children in Gaza? Is that what they are? Blank checks? Hmm. It's an interesting phrase. Are you trying out for a job at the State Department? Blank checks. Blank checks are being dropped on, have been dropped on 30,000 Palestinians in Gaza and they've stopped moving. That's a lot of blank checks to fall on someone, but I guess I can imagine it, you know, if you had like a truckload of blank checks falling on you that they could crush you. It's definitely a problem. The United States giving all these blank checks to, to Israel. Big, big, big problem. You mentioned the Arab peace plan. In 2002, the Arab League offered Israel full political, economic, diplomatic normalization. In exchange for the main crux of it is creating a Palestinian state in the 1967 borders, which is in line with international law and so forth. Right. They've reiterated, and a repatriation plan, which... Which can I be think. negotiated, the, the, deal, the details of it, but that right. was the crux of it. And, you know, they've reiterated this plan many, many times, including recently. And it's not just the Arab world, the broader Muslim world as well, too. I interviewed the Pakistani ambassador to the UN a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. He told me that Pakistan, Indonesia, other large population Muslim countries would be willing to normalize with Israel, but they do not want the Palestinians to be thrown under the bus. There needs to be a two-state solution, in their view, mm -hmm. creating a state in those lines. Without that, they cannot be. But the Israeli government has never responded to this deal. It's not even rejected it. It's refused to engage. And I think the main reason is because they have the U.S. as a guarantor. Whatever they do, they'll have a superpower backing. And many people in Israel want the West Bank. And the Isra Many people in Israel want the West Bank. Really? Do you know there are also some that want Gaza back, too, because uh, Israel settlers used to live in Gaza. So, uh, yeah, so if there are many people in Israel that want uh, the West Bank and they want Gaza, and they have enough blank checks to drop from planes to bury Palestinians in them to the point of suffocation, uh, then why would they want to do any peace plan with anybody else? I don't get it. They wouldn't. I mean, that's the point, that the fact is that if the U.S. gives uh, Israel the bombs, oops, I said the wrong word, it, you know what I mean, uh, to kill everybody, and Israel can kill everybody and get the land that they want, then why wouldn't they do it? And if other nations or Muslim nations around the world say, oh, well, we'll, we'll work with you if you recognize them, uh, they don't want to recognize them. They want the land. I mean, so they're saying that they've buried the facts of the matter in this smarmy uh, conversation. Anyway, moving on. Benjamin Netanyahu has bragged that he's stopped the Palestinian state from coming into existence. And because they have this backing, they don't need to compromise with their neighbors or right. engage with their neighbors Do you think the U.S. backing of that enables I think, this reticence? I think the U.S. putting itself right. in this position, not just this position, many other situations where right. it acts as a blank check writer for its clients, it enables these situations. Well, we got to make back. money somehow. And uh, without selling weapons, what are we going to fall back on? Wheat? Come on. Right. <laughs> yeah, you probably have a...
So there we have it, John Stewart making fun of the blank checks that have killed 30,000 people. So if you're a viewer of this show and you're watching this interview and you don't know a lot about Israel or Gaza, the Palestinians, the Middle East, what are you to make of it? Why does Murtaza Hussein use the euphemism blank checks? How does, that, how does anybody understand what's going on? And why does John Stewart just make fun of it? Why don't they just, you know, again, focus on the simple fact that bombing residential buildings anywhere is a war crime. The bombs that Israel are using come from the United States. Therefore, the United States, because it allows Israel to use its weapons internally within the borders of Israel, and Gaza is within the borders of Israel, is committing a war crime. It's not a blank check. There's bombs. They're killing people. And they both obfuscate that. Um, so in this interview, if you're watching, you really just don't get it at all. It's like, oh, blank check. Yeah, it's very complicated. I really can't understand. No, no, it is very, very simple. All you need to understand is that if Israel gets bombs from the United States that it can use to have its way uh, within its borders with its domestic population, these Palestinians, then it will. It will choose force over negotiation or anything else. And that's the hard fact of it. And if you get in the way, you will be killed by a bomb. Not by a blank check, by a bomb. And so this whole interview is a very sad case because these people know better. They know what I am saying is not news to them. They know these aren't blank checks. They know they are bombs. They know they're bombs that come from the United States. And they will just not use that word. Why? Why won't they use that word? As uh, Paramount or whoever owns Comedy Central, has, have they instructed them not to use the word that is the fact, to use a euphemism like blank checks? Or does uh, Hussein say this out of his own desire to, I don't know what, to join the CIA or State Department someday? What's with it with this word blank checks?